thing. You can't understand nothing unless you just listen to me. But go ahead, verse 4. For if he that come and preach it, another Jesus, whom we have not preached. See, you could be, somebody, just because they say Jesus don't mean they tell them the truth. They could be fabricating a Jesus. Another Jesus is the one we hear about most Sundays. Another Jesus. That's not even the Sabbath day. The Jesus of the Bible don't condone any type of worship. But the Jesus that they preaching on Sunday do. The Jesus of the Bible didn't say celebrate my birthday. Not nowhere in the Bible did he mention that. Not nowhere in the Bible do you say, see anything about December 25th, but we got a Jesus out here who you supposed to honor that way. But now, people have a problem when you say that. Then when you turn around and say you keep the feast days, they have a problem with that. And we can read that out of the Bible. Jesus himself observed the Passover. But people have a problem with that. That shows you how backwards the world is. That's what he means, though. For if he, that, verse 4, for if he that cometh preach it another Jesus, it's only one Jesus, but if you lie in the name of Jesus, you have made up another one. Right. You're giving people another Jesus. These false, blind false shepherds are giving people another Jesus. For if he that cometh preach another Jesus, whom we have not preached, go ahead. Or if ye receive another spirit, which we have not received, uh -huh. or another gospel, which we have not accepted, uh -huh. ye might well bear with him. He said, look, if you get another Jesus, or another spirit, or another God, he said, I'm, I'm worried about you. That's what he's saying. But who would do such a thing? Who would dare preach another Jesus, or bring you another spirit, or another gospel? Who would dare do that? Verse 13. Skip down to verse 13. He's going to get right to it. Go ahead. For such are false apostles. Oh, a false apostle. That's the, that's the modern title some of them use nowadays. You got some apostles out here, but just because they call themselves apostle so and so, so and so, don't mean, look, they might be. They can be a false one. Nine out of ten, I'm going to tell you, nine out of ten, they are. Because that's what's out. That's the norm now. Jesus says many of them. For such are false apostles. Why we don't have, we got all this stuff about false, this, bad preachers, pastors that's destroying the flock, blind leaders, greedy dogs. We got all this stuff. Why we don't hear no preacher or so-called apostle telling us about it? Well, why would they? If they it. Not too many times, unless you're stupid, you don't be blowing the whistle on yourself. You don't even want to draw attention to yourself. So of course they win. But look, we got it all in the Bible. Paul said, for such are false apostles. So if they call themselves apostle, that should be your next question or your next concern. Okay, yeah, I heard you say apostle, so-and-so. But I want to make sure you're not a false one. they look at you funny then. But you be right to do that. You be right to consider whether or not I am a false apostle, a false prophet, a false shepherd, if we got so many warnings about that in the Bible. I won't even get mad at you, because you should make sure. That's why we, do, we have a service set aside for people asking questions, because we know that people need to learn, people need to ask questions. And we don't mind answering them from the Bible and won't get offended. But now, verse 13, read it again. For such are false apostles, uh -huh. deceitful workers. Oh, deceitful workers, though. Go ahead. Transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. But they're not going to come to you acting like a false apostle, are they? No, they looking like they cry. That, see, that's how they bring you that other Jesus. They looking like they're an apostle. They didn't transform themselves. So when you see them, they look so godly. You couldn't, you'd be, you be swerving down. Oh, they, that's a man of God. Look how he's standing. He have a big thing. They have a big thing on. He come out walking, surveying. Praise the Lord. Let the church say amen. 
But that don't mean nothing. That, would that determine whether he, you know, is a man of God? Because he say a few words like that? Uh -uh. You got to see what his doctrine is, what he is teaching. Is he really teaching about the Lord or otherwise? So he said, such a false apostle, deceitful work is transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. Go ahead. And no more. And it ain't no big deal for them to do it. Why? For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. See, Satan, that's who they working for. And Satan is transformed into an angel of light. So Satan behind the scenes, he know how to make it look good, in other words. He know how to help them make it look good. This is some deep stuff. He know how to fix it up. And it'll look real good. If you're not looking and not paying attention and not trying to decipher, you will be duped at every turn. But if you know that the Lord is saying, beware of false prophets, it's false shepherds, it's, they all over the place, be on the lookout, then you can pay attention. He says, Satan is transformed to an angel like, therefore what? Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers. If his ministers. See, these are Satan ministers. But who, they, who minister they looking like they are? Christ. They transformed into ministers of Christ. Ain't that something? Satan got ministers. Read my lips. Satan got ministers saying they ministers of Christ. You should ask yours, is he one of them? Because they're out there, right? He said they Satan ministers. He said they transformed them. Their apostles transformed themselves into apostles of Christ. Then verse 15 said, therefore it is no great thing if his ministers, go ahead. Also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. See, because Satan did it, so that's why it's easy for them to do it. But they're going to get what in the end? Whose end shall be according to their work. But they're going to get it in the end, but in the meantime, they're leading people to hell. But now, go to uh, Matthew 24. We're going to wrap it up. Matthew 24. Let's see what Jesus himself had to say, even about our days. We touched on this a little bit last week, but it ain't going to hurt to read it again. Because they asked Jesus about the last days. And this is the number one sign. The first thing came out of his mouth before he got into what we talked about last uh, Friday night. Was it Friday night or Saturday? One of them days. <laughs> wars and rumors of wars. Till Armageddon. Before he even got into that, he told them about this, gave us this great warning that we're dealing with tonight. You got to beware of them. 24 and 3, go ahead. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Now they wanted to know the sign of his coming and the end of the world. We fast approaching that. We getting closer and closer to it. Closer than ever now. It, is, it, it can't be... The world can't go on 40, 50 more years. Can't do it. But go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive. That's the first thing he said. Beware of deception. But who is he worried about deceiving? Some of these blind false shepherds. Some of these false apostles. Some of these false pastors take heed that no man deceive you why verse 5 for many shall come in my name see they coming in his name but they preaching another Jesus like Paul said Paul said if he that come and preach another Jesus that mean they coming in his name but they not telling you the truth about him for many shall come in my name they coming in his name but what and saying I am Christ oh they gonna say he Christ but what? And shall deceive many. But they deceiving many. They deceiving many. That's not a small, that's not a light thing to take if they deceiving many. Just like Peter said, many shall follow them, these false teachers. Verse 11, go ahead. Verse six. I'm sorry, yes, verse 6. 
and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Uh -huh. See that ye be not troubled. Uh -huh. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. But now he got into the physical sign, but the first thing he warned you is spiritual. Many false prophets coming in this name. Verse 11, let's make sure. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. See, he said it again. Many, not a few. See, if he had said a couple, two, three false prophets, nothing big. Don't worry about them. That would be one thing, right? But now if Jesus tells you it's going to be many of anything, and if it's bad, you should be on the lookout for it, shouldn't you? You should not want to be getting taught or led by a false prophet. Because he is leading you to destruction. He's selling you out so he can get what he want right now. He don't care. He, he don't, he's not thinking about the future. Some kind of way, I guess he think he's going to escape. Because else, how would he do what he's doing? But he, whatever's on his mind shouldn't matter. You shouldn't want to follow him. Many false prophets shall rise and they are doing a good job at their craft because they are deceiving many, right? Verse 24, he's going to tell you about it again. Go ahead. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets. See, he told you again. All this is pointing to our days. They all over the landscape. There shall arise false Christ and false prophets, go ahead. And shall show great signs and wonders. See, just because even if they could do a miracle, some of them acting like they're doing miracles, but eventually it's going to be one come on the scene, he's going to really do some miracles. But that don't mean nothing if he lying. You got to go by what he is saying. Go ahead. It is so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. They shall deceive the very elect, he said. Go to back up since we're in Matthew, back up to uh, Matthew uh, 7. Back up to Matthew 7. And pick it up at verse 15. Matthew 7 and verse 15. Beware of false prophets. Now here you go again. This is Jesus talking. How many times he got to warn you? We got to get a warning from somebody in the Bible about somebody coming lying to us about God. This is Jesus now. If we don't believe Micah, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Peter, Paul, we got to believe Jesus, right? Notice everybody telling us, though, we could have read some more prophets and some more apostles. Everybody telling us. Beware of false prophets. But how they coming? Just like Paul told, called them apostles, he said they transformed themselves, right? Let's see if Jesus knew about this transformation they was making. Beware of false prophets, which do what? Which come to you in sheep clothing. Oh, they come looking one way. They looking like a representative of God for real. You wouldn't tell from the outward appearance. You can't tell. I can't feel. Let me see this one. <laughs> see what kind of suit. What kind of suit you got on is that? You can't tell that way, can you? He said, they come to you in sheep's clothing. That means they look in the part, in other words, but what? But inwardly, they are ravening wolves. But inwardly, they are, they coming to destroy you. They ravening wolves. And it must be a problem if Jesus said, beware of them. That means we should literally be on the lookout for this stuff, right? Anytime somebody say, beware. You passing by, you even going, to, I go to somebody's house and they got a sign up there by the gate talking about beware of dog. I'm going to be looking around. And then especially like, whoo, whoo, whoo. I'm be like, look, I done been to people's house and they be talking about dog be barking real loud. See a big dog, he won't bite you. <laughs> I, am, I am aware of that. Big old dog standing there. He's like, oh, no, he ain't going to mess with you. Look, put the dog up, please. <laughs> and they got a sign that said, beware of dog. <laughs> but look, anytime you see beware, that's a warning. Read 15 again, because maybe the people ain't listening. Go ahead. 
Beware of false prophets. Beware of them. Now go ahead. Which come to you in sheep clothing, mm -hmm. but inwardly they are ravening wolves. See, they got another agenda. They come one way, they looking the part, they looking like they really working for God. I had people say, well, I know mine is not one. I know mine is not one. You know, I seen them go to the hospital to visit people. Look, the mafia go to the hospital and visit somebody. They go to the hospital. They might even go to the hospital to see somebody they didn't shot. So the false prophet that messed you up, that might even be why you got sick. Then he gonna come to the hospital and visit. That don't determine it, in other words. Go ahead. How you gonna, what determine it? Go ahead. Ye shall know them by their fruit. Go ahead. Do men gather grapes or thorns or figs or thistles? See, you know them by their fruits, he said. What fruits? What he is teaching you about God. Adam and Eve, he said, don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. They ate some bad fruit. They took of the fruit and they ate it. That means they got some bad words, some bad information. They got some lies. That's the only fruit we could be talking. We're not talking about people lie say Adam and Eve ate an apple. Couldn't have been. That wouldn't make no sense. Apples don't give you no insight on anything. Because else we'd quit school. Just get by apples. That don't give you no insight. But they got some insight because when they ate this fruit, they knew they was naked. That's why in Genesis 3, when God came to them, he said, who told you you was naked? Because they had been talking to somebody, getting some insight. But it wasn't good. So he said, you should know them by their fruits. Go to, now let's get back on track, Jeremiah 3, 5. <laughs> See why this is so bad. See, but false prophets make a good living and they get over on people because, only because the people like it. See, we have false prophets tell us, you know, they put us in the office. We went to churches a bunch of times and try to talk to the people and the priest said, no, no, y'all come back here. Leave the people alone, they don't want to talk to the people. And we had preachers tell us, we sit down with them and talk to them, say, well, you know, this stuff that you're teaching is wrong. I know it's wrong. We had preachers actually tell us that. I know that. Like, well, you know it, well, well, why? They don't want to hear it. That's what he'd say. They don't want to hear the truth. I'm just giving them what they want, which he really, he telling the truth. He ain't lying. But it's not his job to give them what they want. It's his job to give them what the Lord say. Notice this right here, Jeremiah 5. Should have had a tape recorder. Play it before the congregation. I know I'm lying to them. <laughs> Jeremiah 5 and 30, go ahead. A wonderful and horrible thing is committed in the land. See, this is wonderful and horrible. It's amazing, really. And it's not good. What is it? The prophets prophesy falsely. Oh, the prophets lie. We keep getting that. The prophet. See, we ain't talking about bank robbers. I mean, or, or we ain't talking about somebody doing some dirt in the street. We know they doing dirt, right? We ain't talking about the man in the pulpit. The prophets prophesy falsely. Go ahead. And the priests bear rule in their means. And the priest, that's the man in the pulpit, he bear rule by their means. He ruling by his own means. He ain't ruling according to what the Lord say. Go ahead. And my people love to have it so. Oh, but the people love it. They love it this way. They wouldn't have it no other way. That's why you can't even talk about some of the preachers in front of them. Oh, don't be talking about my pastor. They get upset. I, I ain't lying. Lord is my witness. I heard people even bragging about what they done did for they. Oh yeah, we bought them a car. Yeah, we yeah we put his kids through school. They think that's a good thing. They really think that's something. And worse than that, he haven't taught them nothing about the Lord. That's what they think it's all about. What they could do for him. Oh, we did that for pastor. Oh yeah. But. That's a problem, and he ain't told you nothing about the Lord. The prophets prophesy falsely, the priests bear rule by their means, and my people love to have it so, but the problem is, what's gonna happen 
when you got an answer to the Lord. That's what he get to. Go ahead. And what will ye do in the end thereof? See, but well, what you gonna do when you when it come time to put up? What will you do in the end thereof? Because you getting destroyed. Why? Let's see. Hosea 4. <clears throat> Let's see exactly what it is. That's destroying the flock anyway. That the prophets are not doing. See, he lying to us. They are lied to us. Therefore, we're not getting what we need to please God. Hosea 4 and 6. Go ahead. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Oh, that's how the flock is getting destroyed. They not getting the knowledge they need from the preachers. And that's what the prophet or the shepherd is supposed to be doing. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So instead of him giving you the knowledge about God, he giving you some of everything else and you being destroyed. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Go ahead. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Uh -huh. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, uh -huh. I will also forget thy children. He said, look, you done forgot me. I'm going to forget your children. Talking about Israel. But go to uh, Luke 11 now. Let's see if Jesus had a problem with these shepherds not dispensing knowledge. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Luke 11. Fifty-two, Luke eleven and verse fifty-two. One verse. Go ahead. Woe unto you, lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. See, the lawyers is like what we call these doctors supposed to be in the word. They call themselves doctors now, where well, they're supposed to be a lawyer. Same one in the word. Supposed to really, he didn't got a degree in God. That's really what it's saying. He didn't got a degree in God. That's what. You know, these religious doctors, they call themselves Dr. So-and-so. Jesus said, woe unto you, lawyers, for you done what? For ye have taken away the key of knowledge. They taken away the key of knowledge. You need knowledge. They didn't took it away. They made sure you don't get the knowledge. Who did it? The one supposed to know. They have taken away the key of knowledge. Go ahead. Ye enter not in yourselves, uh -huh. and them that were entering in ye hinder. See, you don't enter in yourselves. The, 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 the leader, the blind leader, he going in the ditch. He not entering in, but worse than that, somebody that's trying to get in, he's stopping them at the door. No, no, that ain't the right way. Come this way. Follow me. And he going the wrong way. You enter not in yourselves, and them that were entering in ye hinder. Let's see what's going to happen to them in the end. Before we, well, let's go, uh, yeah, Jeremiah 25. <clears throat> and we got one more after this. Twenty-five, because the Lord going to get them for all of this in verse 30. Jeremiah 25, verse 30. When Jesus come, these blind false shepherds, they at the top of the Lord's agenda to pay. And if you follow them, then you're going to get paid right with them. Verse 30. 25 and 30. Go ahead. Therefore prophesy thou against them all these words and say unto them, The Lord shall roar from on high and utter his voice from his holy habitation. Uh -huh. He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. Uh -huh. He shall give a shout as they that tread the grapes against all the inhabitants of the earth. So he said prophesy. Let them know what the Lord is going to do. He's going to roar from on high. This is Jesus when he make his second coming. He going to roar from on high and utter his voice from his holy habitation. 
He shall mightily roar upon his habitation. He shall give a shout. Remember, he's coming back with the shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. Go ahead. A noise shall come even to the end of the earth. Uh-huh. For the Lord have a controversy with the nation. Ah, oh, he's dealing with all the nations. But he's going to have some specific judgment for these false prophets. But it's all over the world. Notice he said noise shall come to the ends of the earth. That means everybody going to hear this. It's not, not going to be nothing secret like we dealt with last week. Go ahead. He will plead with all flesh. All flesh is absolute. He going to deal with all flesh. Plead. He don't mean beg. He is going to deal with you. Go ahead. He will give them that are wicked to the sword. He will give them that are wicked to the sword. Said who? The Lord. Said the Lord. See, the Lord not playing. 32. Thus said the Lord of hosts, Behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, uh -huh. and a great whirlwind shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. See, the Lord gonna be down all nations when he come. Go ahead. And the slain of the Lord And shall the slain of the Lord. Nobody never talk about the Lord slaying or the Lord killing, but that's what the Bible is saying. The slain of the Lord. This is future. The slain of the Lord. Where is it going to be? It shall, the, and the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even until the other end of the earth. See, we know we ain't had this happen yet. But the Lord show he got a propensity to do it because he flooded the earth in Noah's time. But this is when he come with that fire. And this is how it's going to be. He said the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even unto the other. Can you imagine dead folks all over the world? See, they got a little lightweight taste of that when they had that tsunami, that first big tsunami. It came out and the water killed people in multiple countries. Only God can make that happen. A wall of water come out chasing people. Not in all directions. I think it was about eight or nine countries where people was dead at. That's just a little tip of what he's talking about here. Read that again, because this is something that everybody needs to hear. Verse 33, read it again. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even until the other end of the earth. Now we know that hasn't happened yet, has it? Nothing like this has happened. The slain of the Lord, it said. I say all the time, they should tell their neighbor that, the slain of the Lord. At that day, from one end of the earth, even to the other end of the earth, go ahead. They shall not be lamented. See, they're not going to be lamented because you can't lament that, that much dead. They couldn't even lament when that tsunami came. They couldn't have funerals for those people. You think they had ceremonies for those people? Look, they showed people in there with masks on because they... All that death, you can't even handle that. They were just taking them, throwing them in ditches. Well, how you gonna, how you gonna deal with all that? And what the Lord talking about gonna be worse. That means they just gonna be dead. And the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth even to the other. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried. Go ahead. They shall be done upon the, upon the ground. See, this gonna be too much for anybody to try to take care of. So they just gonna be there till they rot. Dong upon the ground. But now, he going to mention the ones we've been talking about in this lesson. These blind false shepherds. He going to mention them because they are one of the biggest problems with the world. Not telling people the right thing about God. God hate that. Verse 34. How, ye shepherds. See, now he talking about shepherds. You think he talking about some literal shepherds out there with their flock? No. God is more interested in the spiritual shepherds. He said, how ye shepherds, go ahead. And cry. And cry, go ahead. And wallow yourselves in the ashes. And just, you might as well get in the ashes, or you might as well start rolling around. Go ahead. Ye principal of the flock. That's all the leaders of the church, go ahead. For the days of your slaughter and of your dispersion are accomplished. Uh-huh. And ye shall fall like a pleasant vessel. He said, you're going to fall like a pleasant vessel. 
Let's see if the shepherd's gonna be able to escape. Go ahead. And the shepherd shall have no way to flee. Uh uh. Nor the principal of the flock to escape. See, this is the, the leaders who've been deceiving people all this time, not telling them about God. The God is gonna pay them on this day. Go ahead. A voice of the cry of the shepherds and a howling of the principal of the flock uh -huh. shall be heard. For, for the Lord has spoiled their pasture. See, the Lord has spoiled. They, they look good thing that they got going on. The Lord going to mess it up permanently. Go ahead. And the peaceable habitations are cut down uh -huh. because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Mm -hmm. He has forsaken his covert as the lion. Mm -hmm. For their land is desolate because of their fierceness of the uh, oppressor mm -hmm. and because of his fierce anger. So you don't want to be following a false shepherd who's going to get a payday like this because you got the same thing coming if you follow him because Jesus said if the blind lead the blind they both fall in the ditch, right? right? So now if the Lord is mad with him and you following him thinking he's right with God but he's not you got the same reward he got coming. You can't help it. One more place, Jeremiah 3. But let's show you what we really need from a shepherd. <laughs> we read that the people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We read what Jesus said, the lawyers take away the key of knowledge. So Jeremiah 3 and 14, because this is what we're not getting. We're getting a good story. We're getting a song and a dance. We're getting even some, what they call the, uh, the, the, the motivational speakers. We're getting some motivation speakers talking to us. Inspiration, but not inspired by the word. Jeremiah 3 and 14, go ahead. Turn, oh. O oh, backsliding children, mm -hmm. saith the Lord, mm -hmm. for I am married unto you, mm -hmm. and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, uh -huh. and I will bring you to Zion. That's what the Lord going to do in the end. But what kind of shepherds or pastors is he going to give us there? Because that's the same. A shepherd is a pastor. And the title is Blind False Shepherds Destroying the Flock. How are they destroying the flock? By lying to us, not giving us the knowledge we need about God. What should they be giving us and what will a true one give us? Go ahead. And I will give you pastors according to my heart. He said, I'm going to give you some real pastors according to my heart. That's what the Lord is going to do. See, when this thing is all over without he destroy all the false ones, it ain't going to be nothing but good ones that he's going to use. See, right now it ain't nothing but false ones. Somebody telling the truth and doing this is hard to find nowadays. Somebody doing it. We sitting here reading the Bible now. So we got to be trying to do something. But as a whole, it's many false prophets. But when the Lord bring them down, when he bring the shepherds down, those false shepherds, then this is going to be the order of the day. He said, I will give you paths according to my heart. And what these paths are going to do, how are you going to know them? And how should you, you should know what you need now? What? which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Oh, that's what we need to be getting. Pass according to his heart. How do you know what's a pass according to God's heart? They are going to feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's what you need. That's why we take the time to read the word and get some knowledge and some understanding instead of a verse and a story. We can do the same thing. We can, do, we can have a choir sing some more and have a nice little story, try to pump people up, make you feel good, pass the plate around, say, okay, the usher's coming around. But that's not what the Lord wants, is it? He wants his sheep fed with knowledge and understanding so they don't get destroyed. I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. Sabbath announcements. Our prayer is that the eyes of your understanding were enlightened by today's lesson. DVDs and CDs of our lesson are available. Please place your order in the offering box with your donation. Your order will be ready next Sabbath. Tune in to Thy Kingdom Come television program, which airs in various locations and or on YouTube. 
Feel free to join us at all our Bible study classes. They are question and answer Bible study every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. via our conference call line. Sabbath services are held twice, <coughs> Friday night at 8 p.m. and Saturday at 1 p.m. Children Bible class ages 4 through 12, Saturday at 11.30 a.m. Teen Forum Bible class ages 13 through 19, Saturday at 5 p.m. See your lesson heading for other class location and info. We baptize in the name of Jesus. If you feel you are ready to be baptized, please sign the list at the podium and or speak with Brother Wayne or Brother Devin. Our dress code is all clothing should be modest in appearance. Nothing tight fitting, overly baggy, saggy, or revealing should be worn. During service, men are to remove hats and or head coverings. While women should wear a head covering such as a hat or scarf, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 through 7. If your child becomes noisy during the lesson, distracting other members, please remove him or her from the sanctuary. For convenience, we have a TV monitor area in the rear of the class. Any ties in or free will offering should be put in an offering envelope and placed in the offering box at the front of the sanctuary. Please pray for our strength as we pray for you. Peace and blessings to you and yours in Jesus' name. Peace. Okay. A uh, couple of things right quick. We know about the memorial the blowing of the trumpets uh, this Monday, which we're going to observe Sunday night. But it starts Sunday night and ends Monday night, so Monday is a holy day as well. We're just going to be here Sunday night and have the lesson where y'all going to be here Lord willing, I'm going to be in California doing the same thing out there Sunday night. So that's uh, Sunday, the 16th of course, uh, tomorrow, our regular Sabbath at 1 o'clock. We'll be back here. And uh, so, but that's the next thing. We got the Memorial of the Blowing of the Trumpets Sunday night. We're going to try to start everywhere and same time here in L.A. and in Philly even though it's different time zones, but we're going to start at 7.30 because it's, it's, it's dark about that time. So uh, Sunday night, 7.30, we're going to have a memorial with the blowing of the trumpets. You don't need to bring no food uh, here. I don't know what they're doing in L.A. They kind of got their own thing going out there. We ain't got that <laughs> organized or Philly. But uh, you don't need to bring no food. We we organize enough here where we bring, we bring what we bring. We bring the uh, kind of some refreshments because we don't go into all-out feast on this day. Uh, even though you can eat and enjoy yourself, but we don't go into an all-out feast because the Lord got three, what He called major feasts: unleavened bread, Pentecost, and uh, Tabernacles. And we'll be doing that in two weeks when we deal with Tabernacles. So don't worry about bringing anything. We're going to have that provided for the memorial of the blowing of the trumpets uh, Sunday night. All you got to do is come bring your Bible because, of course, we're going to have a lesson about it, uh, what, showing what the memorial of the trumpets is about. We touched on it a little bit when we dealt with uh, how the Lord is going to conquer the world at Armageddon. But... Uh, then again, that's Sunday night, the 16th at 7.30. Also, we're going to have a baptism in a couple of weeks. We're going to have it on that Sabbath, uh, the 29th. So anybody else interested in signing up, here's the list here. You can sign up. A baptism on uh, two weeks from tomorrow, the 29th of uh, September. Uh, Last Friday, when we had the service, Brother Frank told us about possibly his son was in, in an accident. Well, that was his son, uh, Robert, uh, who got, uh, was in an accident and passed away. So we definitely give Brother Frank our condolences 
and uh, the arrangement it should be posted on the bulletin board back there the arrangements for his son which his name is uh frank name is frank butler i don't know if he here tonight huh yeah. he was okay and his son is uh robert butler who passed away but uh the, the uh, services for his son is tuesday uh, afternoon or morning at 11 o'clock is the I believe the wake is and then the funeral is at 12. It's in Oak Park, Illinois at this uh, uh, it's on the bulletin board. Liberty Light, Light Liberty Church yeah. <laughs> Light Liberty Church right. I don't have it up here with me but yeah it's, it's in Oak Park the address is over there I think it's on uh Washington Street, but anyway, it's back there. Plus, they have visitation the day before, which is the high day, uh, but that's Monday. They have visitation at the funeral home, but the funeral is Tuesday at 11 o'clock, and the wake is 11. The funeral is at noon at Liberty Light Church in Oak Park, Illinois. So, anybody that can make it, want to pay your respects, support Brother Frank. Definitely keep him in this, keep him in your prayers. Uh, because obviously that's a a rough a rough deal. Also, uh, I mentioned praying prayer for uh, Sister Robinson in L.A. And like I said, anybody else you know that's in need, definitely pray for them. But she's doing good. She did have to have some emergency surgery uh, a little later on, and uh, she came out of that pretty good. So she's doing better. From what Donna was telling me, she cracking jokes and having fun now so that's a good good thing so but definitely keep in your prayers as well and I think that's it so if nothing else we're going to stand and face the rules and close out our father which are in heaven our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth. On earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. For his mercy shall endure forever. For his mercy shall endure forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. For his mercy shall endure forever. For his mercy shall endure forever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. The Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. The Mighty One of Jacob. The Mighty One of Jacob. The Lord of Lords. The Lord of Lords. And King of Kings. And King of Kings. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen.